So after being called a scumbag, Sierra then decided to give BK another chance. We find out that Shakana then had two abortions. Probably all of a sudden she don't want to be bothered with none of Jock's business, but you the reason why him and Kendra in a bad place on this episode, y'all. Let's go ahead and get into this. So we start the episode off at Salon Echelon, okay, one of the stylists that left the the flat irons plugged up and then wrapped it up in a towel, put it into a drawer. Now, what the hell they do that at? It sounds like they was intentionally trying to sabotage that salon. It seemed like some shit that uh, Sharonda would do, but I digress. So anyway, so they are now and they, they are talking about what happened. Sharonda says that she got the call immediately. She jumps over there to get to the business and she finds out that uh, it, 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 it's fire. Everything going crazy. Okay, she tries to grab the stink, the the fire extinguisher but then she didn't know how to use it luckily enough the firefighters come and then they're able to put out the fire they say that what caused it was the fact that that stylist had wrapped up a curling iron or a, a flat iron that was on wrapped it up put it into a drawer and then that's just that carelessness okay and so then uh, Kendra gets upset with Sharonda because she's like, look, you trying to place the blame on everybody else, but you the manager. This actually should fall on you. Where is your team? Why are you not being a team player here? She tells her in Spanish that they don't need her services anymore. And so then uh, Jock is a little confused. I'm like, what the hell did you just say? She's like, I'm just saying in Spanish because she don't understand English that we don't need her services. Now, I feel like, honestly, it, it's something faulty in that whole situation. Why the hell would you leave a flat iron that's on, wrap it up in a towel, and put it into a drawer? That seemed like somebody was intentionally doing that, but that's just my opinion. Okay. So now, you know, young Jock need to be a little bit careful about who he hired because y'all know he tried to take stuff into his own hand. I'm interested to see which stylist this was that uh, left the curl iron or, or the flat irons or whatever left it on. I'm interested to see who that was because if it was the lady that handled damn clothes on we knew she her priority was not hair and she didn't care she was probably just there collecting the check and going by her bed then we go over to scrappy and imani and she's they're playing basketball or whatever and they kind of catch up on his state you know how he's doing better he's able to jump and run around but his friend that was in the car with him is not doing so well then imani tells us that she's turning 14 okay so this is a big deal and she and for her 14th birthday she want all of her family there everybody she want him she want bam she want all of that family then she want her mom and all their family they want everybody to exist in the same place with no issues now we're just gonna see how that all is gonna work out it seemed like everybody from erica to scrappy just want to do what's best for imani so hopefully they are all able to act accordingly Okay, but we gon' we gonna see. So then we go over to Spice, Shakana, and Sierra. They're having wine somewhere. I think it's called the wine shoe or the wine shop or something like that. But they're over there having wine. And then Spice tells us that it's making her hot inside. Okay, whatever this wine is, it's making her hot. And so then uh, when the guy leaves, Shakana starts to tell them about her little recent spat with Agbar V. And so then she starts saying that Akbar V needs to take care of her children and not be concerned with what Shekinah got going on. You know, take care of the very child that you had with the guy that I used to date. How about that? So then Spice gets all in her feelings because she don't like when you bring up children in arguments. She feels like that's petty, that's wrong. You know, keep the argument between the two adults. And I can agree with what Spice was saying. And so then uh, Shekinah gets in her feelings and she walks out because Shekinah ain't, she ain't trying to hear none of that. She said, you know what, it's, it's all fair game. She was sitting here talking about me bringing issues up. She brought the child up. So then all I had to do was just tell her she needed to be taking care of that child that you want to bring up. And so... Spice said, uh, you know, Shakana walks out. Spice is like, well, look, look, I'm just a friend to you, Shakana. I'm telling you this because as a friend, you should be able to accept what I'm telling you. And I agree with that. If it's a real friend, they're going to tell you when you're wrong. They're going to tell you when you're right. Sierra walks off. 
and she comes and brings back Shakan and they have the conversation. We find out that Shakan had two abortions when she was younger. So she could have been a parent. She just chose not to because she wasn't ready. And so she's saying, you know, I have much respect for parents. I'm not trying to come at her because, you know, of me just not understanding. It's not that. I got a god child. I, you know, I... I definitely care and understand and, and, and I feel where she's coming from. My issue with her is you over here coming to my event that I'm having and you causing issues. And so this is why I'm reacting the way I'm reacting. Spice agrees. She says, uh, you know, even with the fact that, you know, you didn't have an abortion. So, of course, I understand where you're coming from. I feel your pain. And so they have that little mushy moment or whatever. Gara's daughter, I believe, has been taken care of by somebody else as well. Because she's just trying to get on on her feet and, you know, get everything taken care of in order to take care of her child. So they just have that conversation. So, you know, when Shekinah was talking about the child, I don't think she was trying to be malicious or anything. I think she was just stating the facts that while you over here trying to ruin what I got going on, you need to be taking care of that child that prompted you to come over here and make that comment talking about the daddy of the child. You know what I mean? So I think that's what it is. It wasn't much to that. Over to Scrap, he is going to be taking care of King full time and this is going to allow Tierra to, you know, free up some time and she be able to take care of her other children or child or whatever and her business. OK, so it works out good for Scrap. With all that time he missed, he is really appreciating the fact that he's able to take care of the child. He's also trying to take care of Pat Poppy, which is his other son. Y'all, he has some handsome little boys, okay? And so in order for him to do that, because he's a little bit concerned with the financial piece, he is supposed to be opening up a restaurant, so this will allow him to have the finances, you know, so that he can take care of those children. And y'all, one thing I can say is when Tierra said she wouldn't come back to love and hip hop, child, she had not been back to love and hip hop, honey. She stick to her work unlike some of these other ones so then we move over to Kendra Alex and Cena and they're at some type of jumping place with Jock's kids and basically they're just kind of filling Kendra out Kendra says she likes to go spend time with them even though she doesn't have kids just so that she can just stay in the loop because they're really cool people well of course you know, they're talking to her, are you ready to be Mrs. Robinson? Are you ready for the things that's going to come with it? You know, people are going to take jabs at you. You just got to be prepared. And then Cena, y'all know Cena was at that uh, party with Carly. And so that's when Carly told her about the girls that apparently... Uh, Jock's supposed to be messing with in the salon. So now Cena has this information. So what does she do with the information? She tells Kendra, she says, hey, you know, I found out that Jock has been, you know, according to... Word in the street. She didn't say who it came from, but we all know it came from Carly. Because if she would have said it came from Carly, then Kendra may have looked at the situation differently. She probably wouldn't have paid it no mind. But the way Cena said it was just word in the streets. You know, I keep my nose to the streets, and I heard that he's been messing with these uh, stylists. And on top of that, he's also been messing with Sharonda. I said, well, where that damn uh, rumor come from? I ain't hear that part. Now, I did hear about the, the girls he was supposed to be messing with the stylists, but I ain't hear the part about the Sharonda, which I y'all already know how I feel about that. I already said that I feel like he was mess, messing with her or she has some type of feelings for him because of the fact that uh, the way she's acting, no normal person act like that. That's just your, It's just your partner. He's just an investment partner. Why are you acting like this? Why do you care about who he's talking to? Why are you so concerned? Okay. So um, that's how I feel about that situation. I think she shouldn't have brought it up because it just wasn't her business. Okay. So then Kendra's ride come. Who is it? It's Jock. So then she walks outside. She's walking out fast as hell. Jock's like, what the hell's going on? I'm about to go in there and chop it up with you and the kids. And uh, so then she's like, Jack, why, uh, we doing this, we doing this. And so she's going off on him because she didn't find out this information from Cena. And so then he gets upset. And honestly, y'all, I have to say, I don't think Jock messing around this time. I really think he's into Kendra. I don't think he's messing with Sharonda. Sharon. I don't think he's messing with Sharonda. I don't think he's messing with these stylists. I really think he's into Kendra and what she has to offer and, and what she she's making him a better person. And I think this particular time that he's actually taking her serious and taking his relationship serious, that people are now actually coming for Jock. I think 
it's just because of his history. Jock, I really feel like he's doing better this time, okay? That's just my opinion. Y'all let me know down below what y'all think. But I think he's doing better. And he just so happened to get caught up in what his past was, okay? So anyway, Jock goes back in, tells Cena, look, you need to mind your business. You need to not be worried about what's going on down here with this Peter. You need to not be over here making problems with me and my girl. Like, why would you, what would possess you to say what somebody else told you? Oh, well, then I got the information from Carly. Why would you be repeating what Carly said? And I have to agree with y'all. Why the heck? Carly, she's not credible. Okay, she's definitely not credible. So I didn't understand why the hell she thought it was okay to repeat that. And then she's like, well, you remember when you used to come for me? And you used to say things about me and my relationship? Well, see, now you see how I feel and you don't like it, huh? So then he walks off. I know you want to call her the B word. But listen, I just feel like it's completely different. Y'all see the guys happy. You can't, neither one of y'all can have concrete evidence as to him sleeping with these girls or whatever so i feel like it was wrong for y'all to be going after jock i really feel like jock is being faithful this time and y'all just y'all just keep trying to make him be the person that he used to be okay and akbar you know what i not okay i don't go looking for akbar songs or whatever i'm just gonna say that but from the little snippets that Love and Hip Hop plays, it might be something I might rock with. So I might have to go over there and check out Agbar Stone. So Spice walks in and she's there determined trying to figure out what in the hell is going on with Agbar because Agbar has been very angry lately. She seems like it, it's something that's driving her other than the, the, the small beefs that she's creating. It's like something else has to be going on with her because she's just very angry. You know what I mean? So Spice comes in and she's like, look, you ain't gonna jump across no tables or nothing. Spice's like, no, I'm good. And she calls it a B word. And she said, no, I know how you feel about that. I'm not gonna say that. I'm, you know, you know, we good. I'm not gonna say that. She's like, yeah. So then she just basically tells her, you know, what's going on with you? And so Akbar opens up, says that, you know, two of her kids are with their daddy and the other ones are with her aunt. She says that she doesn't have them because basically she can't, I guess she can't care for them right now. She even mentioned about how being a mother is hard, but I'm like, you got all these kids and you're not taking care of them. So how the hell do you know it's hard? So then she uh, she talks about uh, Spice, tells her, you know, my children are with my mom because I'm trying to work and, and build a life for them so the way they can come in. Agbar, she says, look, sometimes the struggle is good for a child. Seeing the mother struggle makes the child want to work even harder to do better. And I can agree with Spice on that because my mom has had her struggles or whatever. And when I was coming up, I was like, look, I got to do different. I can't be doing that. That right there. We got to do something different, okay? It doesn't make parent wrong or it doesn't make them a bad parent. It just makes the child want to say, okay, you know what? My mom has to go through this or my dad has to go through this, so let me do something different. So basically, Akbar understands and they decide to do a project together. It's supposed to be Spice, Akbar. I don't know who else because Shakana ain't a rapper. She's a, a, a hairdresser, so I guess she's going to do everybody hair for the makeup or, or, uh, or maybe do everybody hair for the video shoot and then the other people bring the talent because because I don't think Shekana is a rapper. But anyway, they're all supposed to get on a project together. Okay? So then now we go over to Sierra. And she has the glam shop. She is the owner of the building now. Kudos to you, girl. <laughs> Black-owned businesses. You go, girl. So anyway, so now she's the owner. So she's doing that. She's giving her business a face lift, she says, in her words. And so she's, you know, doing a little renovating or whatever. And then you see, she starts talking about Scrab. And how it's complicated with... BK and I'm like complicated what's complicated by the fact he called you a scumbag and he was about to buck at you girl you should be done what's complicated girl I was like well you still there girl I thought you was done with him so anyway she talks about the fact she stood up scrap and the reason why is because she wasn't sure where she stood with BK and I'm like okay see you canceled now you know that right you, I done canceled you because I'm like, really? You do all of this talking about him. You you literally use scrap as bait for him to come back to you. And I'm just not here for that. I'm just not. I couldn't even take them serious. I wanted to skip past the damn part where they was doing all that talking and kissing and hugging. And I wanted to skip past that shit because I was, I was completely done with them. I was done with them. She felt some type of way about the way he talked to her, about the way that he didn't been cheating on her and all this other type of stuff. And now all of a sudden you're talking about one more chance girl by. I thought you gave him one last chance. What, what last season? Didn't you give him one chance last season and now you don't come back this season? You're about to give him nothing? Girl, I'm, I'm, you canceled. Okay, we don't. Ooh, okay. The baby shower with Erica 
and uh, everybody pretty much come there. Imani tells her mom that she wants them all to be in the same place for her 14th birthday. Her mom apologizes because ever since she got pregnant with the twins, it's been twins, twins, twins and getting ready for them. And so she apologizes for, you know, neglecting her in this party. But she says, you know, I want your day to be however you want it to be. So if you want everybody to be there, we all going to be there. And they all remember that Erica did extend an olive branch via Mama D. And they didn't accept it, which I felt like was very childish, but whatever. So now they're going to have to get past that because we're going to do this party for Imani. Rashida catches up with, I can't remember who she was talking to, but she says that her mama is in Houston running press. She's down here in Houston, okay? And she's running pressed. And I could not help but remember when those disrespectful women went into press because they wanted to get a picture with the mom, I believe. And they were like, no, per Rashida's rules, she can't have no pictures in here unless you're buying something, you're a paying customer. And then how these ladies like literally disrespected her, that made me think of that. I'm like, I really hope mama's okay because ain't no telling how many times people have tried her ever since that time. And so uh, Tokyo, we talk about how Tokyo hasn't been around. She's not answering any of the girls' calls. And I just feel like maybe sometimes you don't want to be bothered. Sometimes I don't want to be on camera. Sometimes I just want to be to myself. So that may be what Tokyo is going through. And then we find out a little bit later that is what Tokyo is going through. And Carly, uh, or she's invited to the, by Rashida, she's invited to Karen's, Karen King's book signing that she's going to be having. I don't know why I want to say book release, but her book signing and Carly is a little bit reserved because she doesn't want to cause any issues when it comes to her fiance because y'all know they hanging on by a thread okay and so she doesn't want to cause any issues you know she got that curfew situation and plus she used to have a little thing with scraps so she's like I don't know if I want to go messing something up you know I don't want to piss up I don't want to piss them off I don't want that verbal attack. all of the ladies they go over to Tokyo's house and they're on a mission to see what in the hell is going on with Tokyo Tokyo tells them them that you know I just have been moving and I've just been sticking to myself that's it I thought you know I'm good no like no 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 but what's going on with you tell me the truth so then she says that you know she's a little stressed because her father was shot this is her godfather he was shot and then her biological dad moved to Africa and then when her grandmother died she didn't have a chance to really grieve for her I think she was just going 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 and so now all of that is starting to catch up on her because she never actually got to grieve the proper way or handle these issues because she got so much stress and then that her mom doesn't want to move to or she can't move to Atlanta because she got so much stuff she even had two open heart surgeries and uh, something else then happened. So basically her mom has all these health issues and she can't get down to where Tokyo is and she feels like she's down there alone. And they tell her, no boo, you're not alone. You got us, but it's different. You know what I mean? That's her family. That's who, you know, she's close with. I know that y'all love me. Y'all are my friends, but this is my family. And I, I really feel this stress and I need them here with me because I'm here by myself. And so basically they're talking to her, basically telling her, you know what, girl, you you got us. We're going to be good. And they just basically hug it out. Oh, brain surgery. That's what it is. She had brain surgery, child. If I look at my notes, maybe I would know. The last thing we're going to talk about is Karen King's book signing that she had. And uh, we talk about Mama D. I don't know how this turned from her book signing to something about her to Mama D and her situations. But Mama D tells her that, you know, Imani wants to have this event to where or this party and she wants all of us to be there. And Karen reminds her that this is for your children and you have to stop digging at Cece, which is Bam's mom. You got to stop digging at her because the more you dig at her, the more y'all like this, your kids going to start separating. So you might want to stop doing that. And so Mama D understands and she says that CC is a two-faced B word and that uh, she just can't deal with her. But she, she she's going to tolerate her for, um, for Imani and for the sake of her child. She has to because you don't want to push him away because of your hate for this lady. And so then... <laughs> So then Carly comes up and she's with Rashida and they see Scrap and Scrap says hi. You know, I haven't seen you since I was in jail. And apparently when he was in jail, y'all remember Tierra didn't come see him not one of those three years. But we found out Carly did. And Carly's trying to downplay it like, oh, no, you know, I would do that for any of my friends. It's fine. I'll do that for any of them. 
Oh, so how you been, Carly? Oh, I'm, I'm engaged, happily engaged. I'm like, girl, you ain't happily engaged, girl. You just went to counseling. He walked out of counseling, left the ring. Y'all ain't been talking, girl. You staying in a whole different house. And y'all ain't really been on the same page. He got you on a 2 a.m. curfew. He basically controlling whatever you do. He verbally abuses you, girl. What about that is happily engaged, girl? I was like, girl, you ain't happy. Even Rashi said, girl, happy. Girl, you just trying to front. You trying to put on the front for your ex boo. But, you know, it was just a whole weird situation because he's just trying to talk to her and just make sure she's okay. And then she's trying to, like, push him back because she don't want nothing to come of it. I'm like, girl, you need to, you need to stop. Okay. So Karen King starts to speak about the book and she speaks about, you know, her inspirations in the book. She's had a really tough life. She speaks about scrapping the book. She speaks about all the, the bad decisions that she had to make to get to where she is today. And um, I haven't had a chance to really read or listen to the book just yet. Now I have heard, heard snippets and there is another YouTuber that actually reads celebrity books and her name is Toxic Diamond. So go check her out. She This is one of the books that she did read and this is how I heard some of the snippets, but I haven't really gotten to the whole book yet. It may be something that I want to get myself and just read through it. But, um, but anyway, she talks about that and then, you know, you see Carly walks out. She sees Jock. I don't know whether Jock was going to the event or whether he just pulled up because Carly would be there. But basically, he confronts Carly about why would you go and tell my baby mama, Cena, about me sleeping with Sharonda or me sleeping with the stylist? Like, why would you do that? Why are you lying on me and what's going on? Like, this don't make no sense. I got the information from Shakana, and I'm not worried about what you and your Peter is doing. I don't care. I'm like, yes, you do care, Carly, because you was depressed that day when you told this girl about what was going on with Jock. You could have kept that to yourself. That didn't make any doggone sense. So you talking about you don't care, but you really care. And so he's like, why are y'all constantly trying to sabotage my happiness? Be happy. I am in. I am engaged, Doc. I'm not worried about you. Do you want me to start saying that? Oh, I've never been with Jock before. We never had a relationship. Well, that's. I'll start doing that. I never knew you. And then she walks off. He confused because he's like, "Are you on Molly? Like, what? What? What the hell is really going on?" So, so now you got that situation happening. Granted, I understand what Jock was talking about, and I, I get where we got to give her a pass, y'all. Carly is stressed out. Carly has issues. I think I'm just about to talk y'all to death. So what we're going to do is go ahead and end this video. I would like y'all get in the comments. Let me know what you thought about this video. And until next time. Yeah, low key and maybe high key. I bet Pete that you like.